Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for a solo cast for you, and I'm doing things a little bit different. If you are watching this on YouTube, I'm, it's more of like a relaxed, laid back, me chatting with you podcast style video. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's really not going to seem any different. <laughs> the purpose of this video is to talk about some of the things that I saw in 2022 that I believe are going to continue to be very important for 2023 and things that you're going to need to know about to see the success that you want in 2023. So specifically five things. We're going to go over each of them in a minute. If you're new here, my name is Erica Vieira. I'm a YouTube strategist and consultant having helped thousands of women behind the scenes through this podcast, the YouTube Power Hour podcast, my Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp, my one-on-one YouTube coaching, and my strategic channel management. So I spend 99% of my time working with YouTube content creators. I work many hours a day, you know, usually 10 hours plus. And the vast majority of that is working one on one with creators managing different YouTube channels. And so you probably just see this part, the podcast, but don't realize how much is going on behind the scenes. And I do like to create these videos every now and then sharing with you my knowledge and what I've been seeing and the trends that I've been seeing working with so many different creators with different niches, different experiences, and, and understanding what is the landscape of YouTube right now. I know YouTube can be a very lonely experience. You're doing it on your own. Maybe you have a couple friends that do it, and you're trying to navigate it on your own and figure out and make decisions and second guessing yourself and okay I think this is what's going on. But I think I have this unique perspective and experience of literally talking to dozens of creators, you know, a day and going through all these different channels and really understanding what the landscape is. My mission here with my YouTube channel, with my content, with everything that I do is to help you understand YouTube and be able to leverage YouTube to accomplish your dreams in life. I believe that YouTube is such a powerful vehicle, especially for women to be able to do that. So I wanted to bring these five things that I'm seeing that I think is important for you to be aware of. So number one is YouTube Shorts. Well, if you've been around on YouTube and you've either been creating content on YouTube or maybe you work with a partner manager through YouTube, you know that YouTube is really pushing shorts. And YouTube has traditionally been a platform for long form content. YouTube is really, in my opinion, the king or queen of long form content. They do it best, better than anybody. But of course, now we've got a lot of platforms out there that are embracing short form content, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, even LinkedIn, and YouTube did not want to be left behind. And so they came up with YouTube shorts. They launched it a few years ago and they're really been pushing it for on the creators and for the creators to make shorts. For anybody that works with me in my bootcamp, I mean, I talk about shorts all the time and keep in mind, I've have a lot of experience with shorts. I grew a YouTube channel through my agency to like half a million subscribers uh, with a shorts based strategy. I have a lot of experience with shorts and understanding what's going on with the YouTube shorts. And I have a lot of thoughts and opinions and my clients, my boot campers, they know that I have very strong opinions on shorts. But the question is, should you be doing shorts? Do you need to be doing shorts? My short answer is yes and no. And of course, I'm going to go into detail about that. But first, YouTube has come out saying that they will monetize shorts like they had been long form videos in the form of AdSense. Prior to that, it was a shorts fund, which in my experience did not pay much at all. It was actually disappointing how little we got paid for millions upon millions and millions of shorts views from the shorts fund. And so the monetization just really wasn't there as appealing as it is for long form content. Now YouTube is saying, well, we are going to be rolling out AdSense for shorts. Okay, that's great. That's great news for shorts creators because they should be getting compensated more for creating all of this content. But is this going to equal what you would make if you were creating long form videos? I have to say, I don't 
I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because if you really think about it, I mean, unless you're creating short after short after short after short after short, which is a lot of work, right? It's a, it's a lot of work. If you think about it, if you have a long form video that has, you know, multiple ads on it, and you're getting paid on that video, that that viewer, right, who might see a couple ads, you're going to make more from that than from a viewer that is watching several shorts, because I'm assuming the way it's going to work is that there'll be several shorts played and then YouTube is going to play maybe one or two or I don't know how many ads. Now the creators all have to share in that ad revenue. Whereas if it's your own video, then you're not sharing with anybody. So I'm very curious to see how it is going to roll out. I suspect that you will not make as much with AdSense through shorts than if you were with your long form content, unless you're like creating tons and tons and tons of content. There's there's that aspect of things that the monetization of shorts from a AdSense perspective, I don't believe is nearly as high as long form content. I also think if you're the type of channel that has a lot of affiliate type income, I still think you can make much more from long form content. I don't think, I know you can make a lot more from long form content just based off of my experience. Obviously there's exceptions to every rule, but this is based on me working with so many creators and you can make a lot from long form content. And with short form content, I'm, I'm just not, just from an ROI perspective and a monetization perspective, I don't think it's as strong as long form content. But a lot of people will argue and say, well, the short form content is a great way for exposure, right? To bring those people onto your long form videos. Well, prior to, you know, several months ago, it really wasn't the case actually that those short viewers were not being served the long form content. And therefore there was not a bridge between people that subscribe to channels for shorts and the same channels long form content. I think a lot of creators started creating shorts thinking, okay, I'll bring it'll bring them to my long form content, but they weren't being that these new subscribers and viewers were not being served the long form content. YouTube has come out to say that they're going to be bridging that gap that they have been, but I, th I still think it remains to be seen. That happened several months ago and we'll see. Should you create shorts? My answer to you is if you want to. I believe that you can see a lot of success through shorts if it's something that brings you excitement, lights you up, something that you're good at, something that you've seen success at in other platforms like TikTok or Instagram. I think, yeah, that's a great idea. Throw those shorts up onto YouTube. But if the idea of creating shorts seems like something that adds something more on your plate that you just don't get excited about that you're struggling to figure out what to create or what type of shorts to do or you're like that's just not my thing or you don't even enjoy watching short then don't do it you can have a lot of success just focusing on long form content in fact I think that there's a like even more success to be had if you're really successful at long form content just from a ROI perspective a monetary perspective if it's not something that excites you or you've tried it before and you struggle with it. You don't have to do it. And that's the main takeaway from this point is that it's there for you now on YouTube, which is great. So if this is something that resonates with you, you're good at it, you, you're funny. I think, you know, humor is great on YouTube. You've got really cool editing skills, fast pace, and it just aligns with your talents and who you are, then go for it. You know, why not? Test it out. See what happens. Let's see what happens with this new um, ad sense that they're going to be rolling out in sometime in February, then do it, play around with it, have fun with it. But if it seems like something that's heavy for you, not fun, you don't have to do it. And that's the most important thing. And I think that's the most important thing with everything about YouTube. Each person has their own strategy and one person, their strategy might include shorts, but another person, their strategy might not, and they could be equally successful. So just know that you don't have to do shorts if you don't want to. That's, that's the moral of the story with that one. All right, number two, experimenting with longer videos. It's opposite from shorts. However, I know that with YouTube, a lot of people always give the advice of, okay, be snappy to the point. Just get what you're going to say out, start the video fast right away, which is all good advice, which is still advice that I give to people. However, if you are seeing success 
with shorter-ish videos, like seven-minute videos, 10-minute videos, and you're seeing a 50% retention or even like a 40-something percent retention, it does not hurt to experiment with longer videos because watch time is king on YouTube. So the more watch time you can accumulate, the more YouTube will push your videos out. And if you're able to create a 30-minute video and say people watch 30% of it, that's a lot of watch time that you're getting per view. So don't limit yourself to just you know under 10-minute videos or under 12-minute videos and feel like you have to cut everything out. But use the analytics as a guide. That's why I'm such a huge, huge believer in being educated and armed with understanding the analytics because that's going to drive your decisions. And so if looking at the analytics, you're saying, okay, like my watch time or my retention has kind of creeped up a little bit. I'm learning the skills. I'm getting better at YouTube. I'm connecting more with my audience. Okay. I'm getting more consistently 40% retention, all that. Then experiment. See what happens when you do a 15 minute video. See what happens if you do a 20 minute video. Just see what happens because the people I see having a lot of success on YouTube are the ones that are able to hold the attention of their audience the longest. So if you can have a 30 minute video and get 50% retention on that, those people are doing well. They're making a lot of money with AdSense because the longer people watch your videos, the more AdSense you get paid, their videos are getting pushed out more. And so if you can get to that point, I think that is an amazing goal. Every one of your videos doesn't have to be super long. This is something for you to think about and experiment with. And I just want to put it in your mind that you don't have to be doing short, snappy videos to see success on YouTube. Do those still work on YouTube? Yes. Are those still amazing on YouTube? Yes. And that's why I said <laughs> there's so many different strategies on YouTube. There's best practices, but each person, I think, really has their own unique strategy that works for them. And so that's why, you know, when I give advice, it's like, do this, but this. But ultimately, if you can do long form videos and get hold people's attention for a long time, that is definitely a great strategy for YouTube success in 2023. I feel like I'm always telling my clients that, you know, especially the ones that worked with me for a while, that they get it. You know, they're creating really good content. They're doing things well. Like we, we've gotten that retention up. It's like, okay, do a longer video, do a longer video. This video is only like 11 minutes, like it should have been 18 minutes. So it's something that I'm pushing my my clients and boot campers to do. But you gotta look at your analytics. So if you're barely able to crack 20% retention on a 10 minute video, you have no business doing a 30 minute video, okay? So make sure you pay attention to your analytics. If it's a 20% retention for eight minute video or seven minute video, then you really gotta work on other things to get that retention up. Number three is vlogging. Now, vlogging has always been around on YouTube. And for anybody that's listened to my podcast long enough, you know my thoughts on vlogging. I believe that it can be very difficult to grow a YouTube channel as a vlogger. However, what I'm seeing more and more of is incorporating vlogging elements into sit-down videos, into standard YouTube videos, and then also even doing vlogs periodically on your channel. The more people that get onto YouTube, the levels of quality of content on YouTube is constantly improving every year, every year. Like the, the benchmark and the standards are just getting higher and higher and higher. And therefore, we're starting to see videos that just are overall better, more entertaining. And that includes content that has a vlogging element and style to it. I don't think vlogging is the easiest thing to do. I think it requires some skill and practice. Therefore, it's not something that I think a lot of beginners can do really easily. But the more you're on YouTube and the better you get at YouTube, the more you're able to incorporate some of these things like vlogging. And we're seeing it in more and more videos. We're seeing people using a lot of vlogging B-roll in their videos, their sit-down videos, their how-to videos, their hauls. It makes the video more entertaining. Viewers have come to expect it. And so I would definitely experiment with adding these vlogging elements if you haven't already. 
And if you have already been doing it and you feel comfortable, I would say and go far go so far as to saying that start doing full blown vlogs on your channel. And vlogging, there's so many different styles of them. It's like day in the life, like what I eat in the day, come with me to XYZ, come do this with me, uh, travel vlogs, moving vlogs of all these different stages of life. I think it's an amazing way for you to take your audience with you along with these stages, even if it's not 100% related to your niche. And I'm going to talk about your channel niche in the next one. I think it's still important to do these types of videos on your channel because it will help you really connect with your audience and it will expose your audience to a whole different side of you. You might not, but you might, you never know. You might not get like the same type of views you usually get if it's like a normal standard video of yours, of your niche. However, your ride or die true fans are going to be the ones that want to to watch those vlogs and then they'll really get that deeper connection with you. And so for two reasons, I think it's a good idea to just do standalone vlogs on your channel, not necessarily for every video. I'm saying, you know, periodically, every now and then experiment with it. One, because it creates a deeper connection with your audience. They get to see this other side of you. They get to be exposed to maybe something that's going on in your life, like moving, having kids, getting married, all the different stages of life or just a day in the life, right? Um, and then the second reason is that that it gives you practice honing this skill. Because if you're going to be on YouTube and you think you're going to be on YouTube long term, you need to become a good YouTuber. You need to hone these filming skills and this will help you to do that. So I think vlogging is here. I think a lot of creators have upped their game with the type of content they're creating. They're including more vlogging styles. So it's definitely something I want you to consider and start implementing in your channel for 2023. So So number four is your niche. Now, I'm going to do a quick plug right now for a brand new mini course that I've been working on probably all year. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. I'm really proud of it. It's the audience attraction system. And it's a four-step system that I go through with all of my one-on-one -on -one YouTube coaching clients, all of my strategic channel management channels that I manage, and my boot campers. And I truly believe this has been the foundation of so much of the success that my students and clients have seen. And so I created this mini course to share with you so that you have access to all of that information. So I will link all that in the description. But going back to number four, the reason I mention it here is because I talk a lot about your niche and picking the right niche for you in this mini course. Because I'm telling you, niche misalignment is a thing. I can't tell you how many people are not sure or confident of the niche that they pick for themselves. And the problem is that if you do not pick the right niche, it has a, a, an effect on every other aspect of your channel. It means that you're going down the wrong path. So picking the right niche, I found is so important to your success. You don't want to be one of those creators, creators that I get all the time, that years later, they're stuck in a niche that they almost resent. And they don't like and they're like I don't want to be doing this anymore finding an, a niche for your channel is still very important it was important in 2022 and it's going to continue to be important here in 2023 so don't underestimate the power of ensuring that you have chosen the right niche I do believe that the way we look at your niche and actually evaluate and determine whether or not it is the right niche for you and create that niche has changed over time it's not just about picking a broad topic like beauty, fashion, lifestyle. It's more nuanced than that. It's going deeper into you know the demographics of the people that you're focusing on. It goes deeper into who you are as a person, your own unique experience, your own unique perspective, and putting that all together into forming the almost like perfect customized niche for you. And there are certain questions you need to ask yourself to understand like, is this niche going to be that long term horse I'm going to ride on to take me to the finish lane. You have to have a lot of self-awareness to know and understand whether or not that's the right niche for you. But so I want you to think about it. Maybe it's like a no-brainer. You're like, no, no, I'm already, I'm past that. I'm done. Well, great. But for people, people who either who haven't started their channel yet, people that are new or people that have been on and they're feeling stuck, sometimes it could be a slight adjustment to the niche. It doesn't even have to be changing the entire niche like to cut something completely different sometimes it is i have worked with people where we literally change the entire niche but 
I also work with people where we make a slight adjustment to it and boom, that's kind of that lightning in the bottle that, that they needed. It's still a thing in 2023. It's not going away. And it's always a good idea just to keep that in the back of your mind and always be evaluating like your niche and, and exactly what your niche is. Last is magnetic content. Now, magnetic content is something I also talk a lot about in the audience attraction system mini course I created, but I'm going to give you the gist of it here because it's so important in 2023 to get right because I, I saw it as something that really impacted a lot of channels the last you know few years, but especially uh, in 2022. Magnetic content is essentially content that hits home for your viewer. Part of my audience attraction system is knowing and understanding who your true fan is. And I use the word true fan. It's from Kevin Kelly, who wrote the essay, A Thousand True Fans. And knowing and understanding your true fan will help you to create magnetic com content. But Knowing who your true fan is isn't just the demographics. Like, oh, it's a female who is from this area and has done this in her life and is this age range. Like, it goes much deeper than that. It's like, what is this person's needs and wants and deep desires? What are their emotional triggers? What do they get excited about, passionate about? It's like really knowing the heart and soul and mind of your true fan. And once you get in deep with your true fan like that, and you really start to understand them, that is when you can create magnetic content because the magnetic content hits on those emotional triggers, those things that get your true fan either excited about or curious about or things they're anxious about or things they are struggling with or things that they need to know or want to know or want to learn, right? The deeper you understand them, then the better your content will be. And that's what I call magnetic content. It's not just about, oh, I'm going to do a how-to video or, oh, this is trending, so I'm going to do this trend. Yes, that is maybe where you start, but then you combine that with your true fan and those emotional triggers. And then that's where you have magnetic content. And magnetic content is so important on YouTube these days because if you're creating content without understanding who your true fan is, you're literally, you're literally just throwing darts against the wall and hoping that they stick. And some with YouTube, some stick, they do. But what I want for you is a long-term, a long-term sustainable career, if you want to call it career, or it could be a hobby, however, whatever you want to call it. I want this to work for you. And I want it to work for you long term. And so that's part of it is, is creating this magnetic content. Okay, so I'm going to recap the five things that are going to be big in 2023. One is shorts, but only if you want to do it. Okay, like really, that's I want that to hit home for you. If, if, if you get excited about shorts, if you are like, yes, this is my thing, this is my jam, then do it. If you don't, if it brings you stress and anxiety and you're like, ugh, I don't want to do it. I don't even like watching shorts. I don't even want to, blech, then don't do it. Number two is longer videos. Experiment with longer videos. See what happens. But, but, you know, like I said, it's always a customized approach with YouTube, but you got to be nailing the shorter videos first. And then number three is vlogging experiment with vlogs experiment with incorporating vlogging style into your video experiment with doing standalone vlogs it'll make you a better creator it'll connect you closer to your audience number four is niche and making sure you have chosen the right niche that you are not experiencing niche misalignment number five is magnetic content understanding who your true fan is so that you can create this content that hits home for your audience. So I hope you enjoyed that and that that was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments your feedback, your reaction to any of this. Is this going to help you? Have you been experimenting with this for the last few months? Are you seeing this going into 2023? I'm going to put the URL to my audience attraction system mini course if you want to check that out. And, you know, I want you to know my mission with this, my mission with creating this podcast, my mission with creating these courses and what I do and this new mini course it was big for me because 
I truly believe that YouTube is such an incredible opportunity, especially for women. And I wanted to create something that was easily accessible, that could provide you a fast results, but most importantly, can give you a solid foundation that you can take with you for a very long time. I want you to be able to leverage the power of YouTube, to be able to share your message, but also be able to change your life. I've seen, it, I've seen YouTube change the lives of so many women. It's possible for you, and I want you to really, really know that, especially as we're starting a new year and you might be evaluating your goals as to where you are now and you know did you accomplish your goals from 2022 but if you still have those same goals then luckily you know we have this thing where it's a new year and it's like a clean slate and you can start over but you want to ensure that you are taking those necessary steps towards your goals so it's a good time to reevaluate your youtube channel it's a good time to you know look at some of these tips and think about, you know, are you doing it? Are you not doing it? And that's my goal. And my mission is to really help you help you with this journey here on YouTube. So you feel less alone. So I'm able to so you're able to get some advice and insight. These, these podcasts are here to inspire you. The courses I create are there to help you and give you more guidance. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it. And I will see you in the next one.